Um, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, this uh, always is the most exciting and stimulating HIP meeting. Thank you very much, Klaus, for organizing it. And it's a great honor to be here with Mike Millis, who stimulated my interest in the HIP when I was a resident uh, almost 30 years ago. So thank you very much, Mike. So I'm going to talk today about a reanalysis of the fear index. And I think this is probably familiar to most people here. There have been a couple papers in the literature. Uh, the dysplastic acetabulum can be associated with varying degrees of instability, and this remains a diagnostic dilemma for us. We can have dysplastic acetabuli that lead to significant instability. On the other end of the spectrum, dysplastic acetabuli that are quite stable, the hip is quite stable, and then there's the middle ground. And currently, classifying hips with mild structural deformity along the sp spectrum of stability is quite subjective and fairly inexact, and we assume that stable mechanics could be associated with an impingement type of mechanical situation, and unstable mechanics can be associated with dysplasia or instability. The fear index was proposed by Martin Beck. Uh, it was published in CORE in 2017. He presented it two years ago here at the Bern meeting, and it's derived from Powell's and McKay's theory that the upper femoral epiphyseal plate will become oriented perpendicular to the joint reactive force in accordance with the uh, huter volkmann principle. And this could potentially therefore serve as a developmental marker for hip stability. And in his paper and in a subsequent, subsequent publication uh, by Mark Safran, the, the inter-rater reliability was quite good. The fear index, for those of you who may not be familiar, is calculated by measuring the articular angle of the acetabulum and the central third of the epiphyseal scar. And a positive angle opens laterally and is suggestive of uh, instability, and a negative angle opens um, medially and is uh, associated with stability. So the purpose of this study was to extend the analysis over a wider age spectrum. Since I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, I have access to many children's x-rays, and we wanted to see how this behaved in the younger group. We wanted to repeat the analysis in a North American cohort and to include a larger experimental group with a large group of controls. And we sought to ask, answer five questions. What were the characteristics of the fear index in children? How did the fear index change with skeletal maturation? How does the fear index correlate with the clinical diagnosis and surgical treatment in a large cohort of symptomatic hips and asymptomatic controls? How did the fear index correlate with the clinical diagnosis within this difficult borderline slash transitional uh, type of hip? And how does the fear index correlate with the diagnosis of dysplasia and FAI in this uh, special group, which we'll discuss later, between minus four and zero degrees? So our um, patients were called by retrospectively reviewing charts. We identified 368 hips and 205 patients. 262 had dysplasia. Uh, 106 were treated or, or diagnosed with impingement. We excluded uh, pa patients who had femoral um, head deformities that prevented measurement of the lateral center edge angle, who had arthritis, who had had any prior hip surgery, uh, patients who had had prior femoral osteotomies. And we recorded the treatment that was received and the diagnosis that they received and whether or not they were treated with open or arthroscopic treatment for impingement and uh, whether or not they had conservative or operative treatment in general. Our control group was obtained um, from ER patients. We have a protocol for obtaining a standardized AP pelvis x-ray in the ER and we matched these three to one. We, of course, excluded pelvic trauma or any patients who had prior hip surgery. And then we assessed the following radiographic measures, lateral center edge angle, the calculated fear index, the presence of a crossover sign, anterior center edge angle, tonus angle, and Shenton's line. And we performed a two-way ANOVA to examine the change in the fear index based upon both age and diagnosis. We did a one-way ANOVA with a post hoc Bonferroni correction for the comparison of the fear index between groups and then we constructed a receiver operator characteristics curve to determine what the optimal cutoff for the fear index would be in our patient population. So these are the data. What are the characteristics of the fear index in children and how did the fear index change with maturation? We further divided all the children in the group into three categories, less mature, peri perimature, and mature. So um, the less mature children were under 10 adolescents between 10 and 15, and mature patients over 15. And what we found, similar to the paper that Klaus just um, presented, is that we had no patients within our um, practice who were diagnosed with impingement under 10 years of age. 
we found that the fear index in general decreases with increasing age for both our dysplastic patients and the control group. And we found that the fear index is morphologically specific in children and adolescents, so it's a potentially useful as a marker in that age group. And the fear index remained consistent between each age group. How did the fear index correlate with the clinical diagnosis and surgical treatment in a large cohort of symptomatic hips and asymptomatic controls? Performed very well. Of the 262 dysplastic patients, the mean fear index was three, and this was statistically uh, different than the FAI patients and also statistically different than the control uh, patients. If we look at both only operative hips within these groups, the fear index was more positive in the operatively treated dysplastic patients and more negative in the oper operatively treated impingement patients. We, performed, we constructed the receiver operator characteristics curve and we used this to determine that the optimal cutoff for diagnosis was minus four degrees and then further data from the curve suggested that using a value of zero degrees for dysplasia or instability would sharply decrease the false positive rate. And if we use z minus four degrees as a cutoff for stability, we could correctly identify 82% of um, hips that would be considered stable. If we use greater than zero degrees for instability, we can correctly identify 92% of um, hips categorized as unstable. How did the fear index correlate with the clinical diagnosis within this difficult borderline slash transitional group of hips? So the fear index also performed very well in this group of patients. However, there's a lot of overlap. There's a statistically significant difference between the fear index for dysplastic patients versus impingement patients and controls. But you can see from the data that there's a significant overlap. And this uh, gets us to this gray zone. So if we use the cutoff of zero degrees in this borderline group, it correctly identifies 96% of unstable groups, uh, of unstable hips. And if we use minus four degrees as a cutoff for stability, it correctly identifies 76% of stable hips. So this uh, led us to our fifth question, which was how did the fear index correlate with dysplasia and impingement within this gray zone, the zone between minus four degrees and zero degrees? 55 of 368 hips were in this gray zone. 22% of the borderline patients were in the gray zone compared to only 6% of the non-borderline patients, which is statistically significant. And two-thirds of the gray zone patients minus f between minus four and zero degrees were also borderline. And we looked further to see whether a retroversion of the acetabulum as identified by a positive crossover sign had, uh, was complicating our analysis in this group of patients. And we found that if there was no retroversion within the borderline group, then 96% of the patients based upon the measurement of the uh, fear index could be identified as either dysplasia or control. Whereas if there was retroversion, the fear index was not reliable. So if we look at this compared to the two publications in the literature, in uh, Martin Beck's publication, less than minus five degrees corrected, correctly identified about 80% of stable hips. In Mark Safran's publication, greater than negative five degrees correctly identified about 70% of unstable hips. In this analysis, if the fear is greater than zero degrees, it correctly identifies 92% of unstable hips. And if it's less than minus four degrees, it correctly identifies 82% of stable hips. And we had a similar um, inter and intra rater reliability compared to the two prior studies. So I think it's a pretty reliable measurement once you learn how to do it. What are the limitations? Similar to the previous two papers, this is a single surgeon study. So these are all my patients. And ultimately, the diagnosis was derived by a combination of physical exam, plain radiographs, advanced imaging, and personal criteria, which include range of mo motion, tonus angle, and the femoral morphology on 3D imaging. And it really ignores other determinants of instability, such as laxity and femoral version. So in conclusion, the fear index has a, certainly has a developmental basis, and it correlates strongly with DDH and FAI. A positive fear index correlates quite strongly with instability and, and um, 
a positive fear index correlates with uh, instability as well, especially in this borderline transitional age group. However, if there is femoral retroversion, the measurement is not reliable, and the predictive value of fear itself falls down between minus four and zero degrees. So where is this clinically useful? I think the fear index is very clinically useful, especially as a general appraisal method for those, pa for those physicians and providers who may be a little bit less sophisticated in their ability to analyze plane radiographs. And I think it also is an indicator that when the fear index is between minus four and zero degrees, this should be a stimulus to really very, very careful and more sophisticated analysis of these hips and perhaps developing a different scoring system. Thank you very much.